part um, discussing with, with Charlie. Um, Charlie, let's go back. Uh, we, we've spoken uh, the end bit around you having the MB. From that, you've uh, an inspiration of motivational speaker. Yeah. Tell us a bit more around that. What you do? Um, really, I remember how you all started. Um, my dad, he been in football for as long as he had. He's made a few connections and I started at school in my final sixth form year. I started to deliver assemblies and they were funny and the kids were a lot more engaged than when the teachers did them. And um, my dad spied that I had a talent for public speaking. Mm-hmm. so. He contacted his friend, who was the old academy manager at Coventry, where he was, my dad was, when I got hit. He was called Greg, Greg Riach. And he let my dad have annual leave just to be around and support me while I was recovering. And um, he had now moved to Wigan. So my dad spoke with Greg. And Greg invited me to Wigan to deliver a speech to his uh, apprentices at Wigan. And in the audience were his his under-18 and a few um, members from the LFA, League Football Education, and Premier and no. Premier League was another event that I did. And so the LFA first, I just wanted to get on board. So I delivered that inspirational, positive message of my life story and just how I've gone from playing at academy level with Blues and West Brom, then to being hit in Northern Ireland, then to being hit by a car. Life was basically over. No, it wasn't. Now I came back playing West Midlands with you and then getting selected for Northern Ireland and now going on and playing in World Cups and all this. Right, so yeah, there's, a, there's a lot there that you, you certainly go through. Yeah. You, you've got, um, so through, through your time now, so how long have how long you been doing motivational speaking? How long now? Four yes. years. Four we years. Started in February 2016. Oh. I've, I record all my speeches and the dates on my phone. Wow. All right. So I have a record of them all. Oh. There's a there's a lot to go through. I'm sure that data is probably uh, yeah. Cheap. Yeah. It's a massive note. But you, every time I hear, or I've seen it personally myself, the speaking, it's just full of emotions. You got people that are crying in tears. Yeah. Because they feel that they've been part of your journey. Yeah. They may have not, never seen you or connected with you before. And all of a sudden they want to connect with you. Yeah. People are standing up. So I, I was getting feedback, for instance, uh, you did one for the England team. Yeah. Senior team. And so Gareth Southgate stood up and applauded you. Tell, yeah, tell I did what? one. It was um, actually, it was to all the FA colleagues and people who worked in the FA. And Gareth Southgate was there. Yeah. Obviously, it didn't make a good enough impression that he'd invite me back to his first team. That's probably and, one of the actions, Gareth. If you know what I've done now? Oh, my speech was obviously that good. He's wrote a book, and it's called Anything Is Possible. Wow. I'm like, Gareth, I, I want at least 85% of the sales coming my way. So that's your tagline, Anything Is Possible. Yep. You've pretty much uh, made the impossible possible, I would say. Yeah. Yep. Um, Obviously, the, the yeah, you, you highlight the fact that 
that's your, your, the title that you use. It's uh, really powerful stuff in terms of hits home and hard hitting. And yeah. really, really appreciate you talk about the stresses and levels that we have. And yeah. I've, I've, I've been on a downer and I've gone to your event and all of a sudden it's just get me going again. And it's like, I'm motivated to do this. And yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do that. I start really thinking about things. So yeah. the more and more I hear it, it doesn't bore me to death, I would say, but it gives me an opportunity to think what am I doing uh, and what keeps me motivated and driven. Yeah. You, you've achieved uh, going, doing so many different... Uh, is That's pretty much your full-time job now in terms of motivational speaking, isn't it? Yeah. Well, more in recent times, because of the lockdown, etc., I've had to change again and deliver them, a lot of them by Zoom. Yeah. Now, I'm not the best at technology by any means. Yeah, so we know that. That's what we're trying to get this going today. I, know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Like, when you've got to mute them all, I'll just leave them all and just say, shut up. <laughs> there must be a few noises in yeah. the background causing problems. Yeah. But, yeah, great that you've been really creative. You're trying to engage with people uh, that it motivates them indoors. As we know, we're in a we're in tough times at the minute. Um, but you've done you've done uh, pretty much prior to this uh, circumstance that we're in the pandemic. Yeah, you, you you've done so many different uh, work workshops and and delivery to to how many clubs and where? All across the country. I've even been invited to Northern Ireland. To do a speech to the IFA. Right, wow. There. And Michael O'Neill was there and got a standing ovation. Wow. But since he's been at Stoke, he hasn't got me in either. So again, obviously wasn't that good. You need to, to follow it up and uh, highlight in probably bold in uh, font 98. You got the MB as well, so hopefully that would uh, push something uh-huh. there. Possibly. Yeah, probably just been a bit busy. <laughs> He's got to try and win some games first before he gets yeah. out. <laughs> oh, you might even change that, actually. You well, might start getting him with regular three points. Well, I'm not one to say, but, you know. <laughs> but just, just the vast array uh, you've been to support the, the, the whole 92 teams. Is that right? You don't know. Um, I think there's three AFA clubs that I haven't done, and there's one or two Premier League clubs that I haven't done yet. Okay. Like Chelsea. Right. They're I haven't done them to get. And I haven't done Man City, the boys. Yeah. So big clubs there to to, yeah. to fill. Man City obviously feel that they don't need me. Newcastle. Newcastle as well. Sounds like an echo there. What happened there? <laughs> My mind was thinking it before, thinking. mate. <laughs> <laughs> so a few clubs to, to, to achieve. And yeah. hopefully we can make that achieve uh, in 2021. But yeah. it's been fantastic having you on. Uh, what I would say is that if you want to know more, uh, please visit charliefogarty.co.uk to find out further details. Um, uh, last bit from me is that it's been a great pleasure to have you today. Uh, what is the most depressing day of the year? Blue Monday. Um, I've been certainly enlightened, um, inspired by you. And what I would say is thanks very much for your time. Uh, as I said before previously, that it's been positive because it's the first ever time we've actually sat down and discussed about your journey. Yeah. Corrected and your MBE, pretty much everything. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. who would have known that we would have got the time together? But there is a positive thing in every day if you look for it. Right. On that note, I think it's really, really powerful. We'll, we'll take it from there. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Jazz. Thank you for the interview. Or the formal comment.